Ya, yeah, kembali okay, lagi. Okey, selamat kembali. Okey, seperti yang kita janjikan, <laughs> Alhamdulillah bersama dengan kita di studio, saya kira seorang wanita yang cukup kuat, cukup hebat. Uh, yang diimport khas daripada Amerika Syarikat mm -hmm. uh, yang merupakan orang kuat uh, di sebuah uh, syarikat gergasi IBM kalau kita sebut IBM ni adalah uh, satu industri um, multinational uh, satu um, multinational technology company mm -hmm. yang sudah wujud bukannya 16 tahun bukan 20 tahun tetapi dah ratusan tahun yeah. ah. dan paling bestnya tadi kita dah borak-borak dengan beliau Beliau dah ada kat Malaysia dah berapa lama? Dah dekat dua minggu. Dah dua minggu dan ha. makanan favourite dia, laksam. <laughs> Masya Allah. So, welcome uh, to... Assalamualaikum, Deborah. Thank you. Ma Majid, um, Assalamualaikum means... I know what it means. It's what? the same to you. Yes, so, <laughs> Waalaikumsalam. So, now, um, back to the topic because we promised and we've teased our viewers <laughs> from the very beginning of the programme that, you know, we have this wonderful lady coming to the programme yeah. and she's like one of the strongest person in IBM. Um, a multinational technology company and it's amazing uh, you're here and you could share your insights about the company and as yes. well how to strategize because we have so many women entrepreneurs out exactly. there mm -hmm. so of course we want to learn something from your company your steam company so welcome again thank you I'm delighted me too all of us surely um, but for us, first and foremost you've tried nasi lemak haven't you I'm sorry nasi lemak, nasi lemak. Oh, yes, I have. <laughs> I'm just the, the, kidding. What spicy actually, food? Actually, even more than that, there was a pitch competition last week, and the lady who uh, has uh, women in their homes make the nasi lemak and then sell it to corporations and to kiosks, she won a pitch competition that I judged. Really? Yeah. The what last, ma, nasi lemak project. The na so we're going to see a nasi lemak project in Malaysia or yeah, in U.S.? It's already it's already here. Okay, that's pretty awesome. And you've tried the the savouries uh, for nasi lemak course, as well. Of course, of course. Which one is your favorite? Oh boy, I don't oh. know. I like I like all the little sauces and things. Okay. <laughs> Sambal, I think. So okay, tak apa. Maksudnya kan pengusaha nasi lemak pun boleh menonton program kita pada hari ini dan insyaallah mm -hmm. mendapat faedah. Sebab salah satu pitch ataupun uh, proposal syarikat ataupun bisnes telah pun diterima. Yeah. Now um, let's go back to the topic because we've promised everybody that you're going to tell us all the secrets uh, about. <laughs> creating a successful company silicon valley secrets that's where i live yeah let's <laughs> let's share um first and foremost what makes a company successful mm -hmm. what are the elements that you have a big success? company or a little company or maybe it's all the same <laughs> you know uh, companies have to realize that the world changes very rapidly and they have to adapt to change and in fact in some ways, they have to love the fact that it changes and they can keep up with new things that are happening and try different things and experiment a little bit, take some risks. And uh, companies that fail to do that are no longer in business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then when you talk about a technology companies, um, I would say that's one of the most fast changing um, type of business. It changes in a split of second. Um, when it comes to technology, IT, information technology, right, right. and you are in that uh, line. Industry. I know, it's awfully fun. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good. That's very I get positive. bored really easily, <laughs> and so now I'm never bored. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that's really good. Because the competitors, oh my God, when you look at IT, the competitors are like giant competitors. Yes. How do you keep up? Right, exactly. So what you have to do is, is think about what the changes are and what they mean to business. And if if things that you're doing are no longer of a lot of value and you're not really going to make money on them, let them go mm. and do the things that really are high growth businesses. How do you know it's high growth and how do you foresee or forecast? Well, you do a little testing. So we have um, two kinds of organizations that do that in IBM. We have uh, research laboratories all over the world. There are 14 different ones in different places wow. all over. And then we also have a group uh, who I'm seeing next week in uh, Silicon Valley that is responsible for t trying out emerging technologies in a business situation with clients. Okay. So, so when we see something happening and a trend happening, we experiment with clients who are willing to do that. And then when we realize that these things are going to become more mainstream and mm -hmm. deep, deeply part of the business, mm -hmm. then we bring them into our products. Could you oh, share right. an example? 
Uh, yeah, sure. So one of the things that's become uh, really exciting now is artificial intelligence right. and machine learning. I used to be a cognitive psychologist, so I'm very yeah, excited right. that, that these things are becoming real and used in business. Right. And so cognitive computing is a big How, how does it trend. function? Well, you know, computers are... Um, they don't actually think, <laughs> but they, they do better than they used to. So they understand language. So mm -hmm. if I spoke to the computer, it would mm -hmm. understand what I'm saying and what I was asking for. Um, they operate in, an, in a, a context of uncertainty. So you don't have to ask very specific, precise yeah. questions. You don't have to be that specific. It will take into account all of the context that's necessary for the type of business that it's trying to solve a problem in. It could be medicine, it could be retail, it could be financial trading. Whatever it is, there's a context in which these things operate, and these kinds of computers do much better with that. They learn. They learn from their mistakes and from what went right, and they do better each time. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess when you say it's going to be mainstream, it will be perhaps in an apps format for us to use on our phones. That's right, and that's already happening a bit. You know, you have, uh, you know, in, in your um, messaging apps and even in Facebook and things like that, you're starting to see chatbots and you can talk to this, you know, little automated thing. And it's, it's not exactly an app, it's, it's actually replacing apps and it's becoming something that you interact with in a very natural way. Okay. I can't remember this one particular <laughs> app that you can actually ask questions yeah. and they answer it. It's, uh... That's right, Siri on the iPhone does yes, that. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Okay, Deborah, back, back to your secrets as a successful <laughs> woman and entrepreneur. So as a director of strategy in IBM Software Group and you also bring insights from the uh, venture community to the development of IBM's growth strategies. Yes. Okay. Uh, in your opinion, what kind of business models that you see have a very uh, good uh, you know, future in, in business strategy? I like the business models that show that the entrepreneur understands the way the world works and how people behave and okay. what people's habits are. So if, um, if they solve a real problem and they can understand uh, what people like and what they need, and that varies from place to place. So in Malaysia, it's a bit different than Silicon Valley and it's mm -hmm. a bit different from South Africa. So the people who understand a local context and can solve a real business problem or a problem in your life, mm -hmm. um, they tend to be successful. For example, you know, in Indonesia, you have this big uh, transport company called Gojek. Have you been to Jakarta? I yes. mean, the traffic is horrific yeah. yes. and you can't get Very through hectic. it. And so the, these people had the idea that they could have a, 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 a transportation company instead of taxis, they would use motorcycles. The small and, cubicle like yeah, just a, yeah. just a motorbike. Yeah. And, uh, and that is a huge business now. They've had massive investment. Mm. Or there's a Malaysian woman who has a, a, a food delivery service called Deliver Eat. I don't know if you've used it. It's here in KL mm -hmm. and, uh, and in Penang. And, uh, and she, she understood what people like, what the demand is, because there are other food delivery services, of course. Mm -hmm. And she understood that people like some Western things and some local things. Mm -hmm. and, 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 sh and she has a really nice website, so it's easy to use and it's engaging. So uh, some of it is, is about the model itself and some of it is, is how you execute, you know, how you actually bring it to market. So it's a combination of solving problems yes. and the way you execute it, so it's yes. more of uh, human friendly. That's exactly it. So it's yes. as simple as that, isn't it? Yeah, it, you would think that would be simple, but it's actually not that simple because <laughs> yeah. um, not everyone is creative enough or observant enough to figure out what the problem problems are, and uh, some of them uh, don't know how to execute well. For example, maybe they have a pretty good sense of what idea they want to bring to market, but they don't really know how to do that. Mm -hmm. And they don't have the technical people or the nice design people to build a nice experience for the product. Or maybe they're scientists and they just came out of the university and they have this idea for something that's very scientific and technical and it could be all new and it's a nice invention and they don't know anything about business. Mm -hmm. right. So if that's the case, they, they have to get someone who does. Right? So you have been in Malaysia about two weeks? Yeah. Uh, yes. This is your very first time coming to Malaysia? or uh, No, your actually it's time. my second time. Second and time? Yes. Okay. I and was here three years ago and even in three years things I change see. a lot, right? Pretty fast. Yeah. So what's your best uh, part of Malaysia? Yeah. What do you like most here? The food, the people, the culture? Yes. <laughs> All of <laughs> the <laughs> 
No, seriously, because I live in the United States. Yeah. I live in Silicon Valley, which is a bit of a melting pot. There certainly are Malaysian people there. There are actually two Burmese restaurants in my town, and the town is only 20,000 people. And that's so, not big. It's no, kind of small. It's not that big, right? Uh, there's a Korean restaurant. There's Japanese. I mean, there's all kinds of food and all kinds of people. I think I'm going to open one nasi lemma there. Right. There is not. I have not seen it. But the context and you know all everything around you is different when you mm. actually go to the country and so you know you're not just going to an art show or just going to a restaurant to have a meal you're you're embedded in a culture and so it's just different and in fact the way people do startups here is mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. how different is different what do you mean by different the uh, types of businesses they start is, are sort of uniquely Malaysian in some way there there are women who are uh, creating fashion that is uh, suitable for here mm -hmm. and the delivery food delivery service you know looking at things that are suitable for penning and uh, and then there are some negative things as well people here are not as willing to share and they're not as open and transparent as they are in Silicon Valley sharing so in, in, in sharing knowledge. their ideas and sharing their knowledge and sharing what they've learned from either their success or failure mm. in in Silicon Valley people coach each other right. they, they sort of take care of each other okay. and uh, here I, I had somebody say to me I don't want to do a pitch competition because then I would have to tell people what I'm doing <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you laugh, have a but pitch. I mean, he really said that. Oh, <laughs> right? okay. So that's not a healthy attitude. <laughs> okay, so that's something we should look into as that's well. That's something we should try to coach people on and help them with. Mm. Right. And, and yeah. yeah, when you're here, what are the opportunities that you think that could be encouraged uh, yes. in one minute? <laughs> <laughs> because my producer just said yeah, one, one more minute. minute. One more minute. <laughs> I think you need to have a, a way to encourage a, a people to see role models so they mm. can see what kinds of businesses have been very successful and try to learn from how those businesses were successful mm. because you need successful businesses here in order to attract investment. Mm. There isn't enough investment. There are not enough angel investors and venture capitalists. Mm -hmm. They will come if they see that there's opportunity. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of a cycle. You have the startups. They need to do well. Mm -hmm. They need capital to do it. The investors won't come unless they see the startups are doing well. Good. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you very much, Deborah. You're welcome very much. Oh, that was but, fun. <laughs> uh, by the way, you're coming to Malaysia now because you have a talk to be delivered. Yes, to... I'm doing a talk this afternoon for Magic. Okay, let's promote it. How to be a successful woman entrepreneur, is it? And, oh, and also, uh, what kinds of trends that startups are doing now? I All see. right. Yes. Let's share the location, mm -hmm. the venue, uh, <laughs> the time. The <laughs> okay. We can go to the website. Yeah, so you can go to the website. And the website exactly. is? Uh, it's Magic's website, and okay. it's an event this afternoon at 2.30. All right. So let's go and have a look. Yes. And inshallah, we'll get some information. Moga kita dapat informasi yang baik, dan supaya kita dapat membina business. Yang berjaya. Yang berjaya. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure much. having you, you here. Absolutely, pleasure to be here. Thanks. Okay, kita rehat seketika dan kita akan kembali selepas ni. Insyaallah.